Hey, Angela here, and I am doing this video um, to all of my friends on Facebook who are in business, um, especially if you have a business where you are um, have a, where you have a team around you. Okay, so this applies if you have a home-based business and you are you know recruiting other distributors, other team members to generate more customers and sales for your business, or it even applies for you if you have a traditional business and you have a team, right? So let's say you're a hairstylist and you have other hairstylists on board, but um, I wanna share this with you, um, especially for those of you guys who are in the home-based business industry and you, um, a big part of your business is recruiting, right? Or if you have a sales force, uh, maybe you, you know, have other, you know, maybe if you're, if you're in real estate and you have other um, real estate agents as part of your office, whatever it may be, if you're working with people and you have a team and especially if it's like a commission-based situation. Um, and this is why I say, especially for those of you who are in a home-based business, I want to give you a huge, huge bit of advice. So this is going to be like a mini rant slash, uh, <laughs> uh, come to the light truth moment, right? Here's what I want to tell you. What I'm seeing right now in this industry is not only, I don't want to say heartbreaking, but there's a lot of misguided people in this industry. And it's, and it's true. It's not just in this industry. You see it. Um, there's a lot of misguided um, people in different careers. Uh, there's a lot of young people who are not clear on what they want to do. So here's what I'm going to tell you. If you have been struggling with um, recruiting or bringing on team members and it feels like they're always quitting or you always feel like you got to motivate people like at the sign of a struggle at the sign of a challenge they quit right here's what i'm gonna tell you i feel like the industry especially in the home business industry owes you an apology and here's why i say this we have this recruiting system all jacked up and here's what i mean i'm so grateful you know my background was in law and corporate America. Um, a lot of the positions that I have I worked for Disney, which has very stringent, um, you know, recruiting philosophies. Like, for example, um, I worked at Disney in Burbank, California for one of my uh, summers. I think it was like, yeah, after my second, after my second year of law school. And I got this really competitive internship. I later found out that there was like 800 people that applied for this particular internship and they only selected three, right? And I was the only minority and the only female of the three that got selected. So that's how competitive, right? I don't even know if that's like 1%. That's like, I think below even 1% of people. I, I don't know. But um, what I'm saying is this. <sighs> Companies that do a great job of bringing on people on board in terms of their hiring practices, in terms of recruiting, in terms of you know bringing on team members that stick and stay. Our companies are very stringent in who they recruit. They recruit not just based on, hey, you want a job? Hey, you want to make money? Come here and apply for a job. They have more stringent requirements. Number one, what is, what is your long-term vision? What do you want to do career-wise? Um, what are you passionate about? What have you demonstrated a passion in? Let me look at your resume. What's your experience? Um, are you going to be a good fit for our culture and our company? Because every company has a culture. Every team has a culture. So they want to know, can you fit in with the culture of the company? And they want to know, you know, have you demonstrated some passion or past experience in the position that you are applying for? Why do I say that? In the home-based business industry, and for those of you who are my friends who are kind of like, you know, peeking on and lurking on this video when you're, maybe if you're not a, in business, but you're an employee, you probably have experienced somebody in the home-based business industry coming up to you, you know, trying to sell you on their product or trying to recruit you. And you're like, I, I'm not interested in that. Like, why are you trying to recruit me? I don't want to say that I apologize on their behalf. Okay. I apologize because there's a lot of miseducation in this industry. It's one of the reasons why I decided to get involved and that's why I decided to now help train and, and just bring on like practical uh, principles, even from corporate America to this industry because there's a lack of professionalism. There's a lack of just real world education that, that is in this industry. So here's a recruiting tip for those of you who are struggling because you are recruiting all these people 
or you're bringing people on board into your team and they're quitting, be stringent in your standards of who you recruit. See, here's, here's what's happening in the home-based business industry. There are a lot of people getting started because they just want to make money, right? Remember, I gave the example in the job world. That's like people are recruiting people in the home-based business industry along the way. Hey, you want to make money? Want to make money from home? Hey, you know, you want to be able to, you know, earn residual income? Come on, come on, come on, join. Come join. So people join, but then they realize, like, I don't even know what I want in my life. I don't really know what I'm passionate about. Do I really want to do it? I don't really know. I don't. But then they, they, instead of thinking about that before they join, they get started, right? Then when they get started, they may realize, you know, I'm not really, like, I, I really don't like marketing. I really don't like sales. I really don't want to do this. I really don't. But, but they have been recruited improperly. They sh- these people shouldn't have even been recruited in the first place is what I'm saying. That's like, again, in the real world, like in the job world perspective, that's like me owning a company and just telling people, hey, we got job openings. Hey, you want a job? You want a job? Come on. You want a job? You want to make money? You need money? You need a job? Make money? Okay, come on, come on. Work for us. Well, who does that? Apparently in the home-based business industry, what's happening? We got people, we got attrition rates that are horrendous, that are atrocious, atrocious, we have people who quit and that contributes to the failure rate. So therefore, people who are not in the industry, or people who have failed, point to the statistic when it's like, well, half of the people, over half of the people that are getting in don't really have a passion for what they're doing. So then they quit. So let's not measure our success based on those people, right? Let's not measure the success of the industry based on the people who didn't even want to be in the industry in the first place. But so here's my recruiting tip for you. Number one, recruit people based on passion. One of the things I did, and this is in a previous company, I was in a health and wellness company previously before I now coach and help other people um, in their companies do this the right way. Um, when I was in a health and wellness company, I recruited people who were already into health and wellness, who were already personal trainers because they already had a passion for it, right? Um, the company that I was in, they had a mission of ending the trend of obesity. So I said, it just makes sense for me to recruit recruit people on board to this mission of, you know, promoting health and wellness products to end the trend of obesity of people who have already demonstrated an interest and a passion for doing that already, because I'm not here to motivate them. I'm not here to drag them and get them to do something if they're not already self-motivated and already passionate about the mission and the cause that the company that I was affiliated with is already a part of. So here's what happened. I recruited um, personal trainers and they stuck and stayed for a really long time. And I didn't have to motivate them because they were already doing this work. They were already passionate about it and they already felt like that was their purpose. So here's the recruiting tip that I want to give you. What product or or niche or industry your particular company is in or affiliated with? And what you want to do is you want to recruit people who are already passionate about it. Like they would be doing this kind of work or they would work in this kind of industry even if they weren't getting paid for it. And they've already demonstrated some interest in it. Um, The other thing that you want to consider as well is every company has a culture. So if you are in a particular or affiliated with a particular company, maybe you're a distributor with a company, you want to ask yourself, what's the culture of the company? What are the values of the company? And you want to now recruit people who have those similar values. The company that I'm with now, and this is not a video to promote them, so I'm not going to mention the name, right, of the company. The reason why I absolutely love this company and the reason why I absolutely love what I do is because it's tied to my purpose and it's tied to my passion. I am very passionate about marketing. I'm passionate about online marketing. I'm passionate about business. So it makes sense for me to be in the company that I'm in. Why? Because we sell a blogging platform. We sell online marketing training products. Um, And so it makes sense. So I was already passionate. I was already doing something along those lines even before I got into this company that I'm in now. The other reason why I have chosen to stay and why I'm already self-motivated to blog while well, I'm already self-motivated to do online marketing because I'm already passionate about it, right? I would, I would be spending my money and I was already spending my money on marketing training related products even before I was selling them. Does that make sense? Like I was already passionate about it. So you would want to recruit people like me, right? If you were in a company like that, because you don't have to motivate me. You don't have to do some rah-rah. You don't have to drag me. You don't have to handhold me to do Cause I'm already, I, this is what I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, I get to do what I've always wanted to do for the rest for, for my life anyway. I have an opportunity to do it. He, heck yeah, I'm gonna do it. So this is a long way of saying, base your recruiting on people's vision for what they wanna do professionally 
base your recruiting on what their purpose and their passion, especially their passions are, and if it's in alignment with the product or the niche or the industry that your company is affiliated with. Third thing is you want to get a sense of what your company's values are, right? Like I'll give you an example. One of the core values of the company that I'm affiliated with is a commitment, making a commitment. When you say you're going to do something, staying committed and seeing it through. Well, if we recruit a lot of people, which I see happening in my company, who don't have a clue what they want to do, right? They don't have a vision yet. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, when they get into a culture that's all about you're committing, when you don't tip, you don't, you don't put your pinky toe into something, you put your whole body into it. You're all in, you're committed to them. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so restrictive. Oh my goodness. It's because they're not already, they don't know what they want to do yet. And they don't know if yet this is what they want to do. So when they're in a culture that talks about commitment, it's like, oh, it's restrictive. Oh, my freedom. Oh. To me, it's like, heck yeah, I'm committed because this is what I was going to do and I was already committed to even before I got in. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference. So recruit based on vision, recruit based on values, recruit based on passion, not just, hey, you want to make money? Hey, we looking for some hairstylists. Uh, hey, you want to do hair? Hey, you got your cosmetology? No. <laughs> Definitely recruit. Like if I had a hair salon, Yes, obviously I want to I want to bring hairstylists on board that loves that love to do hair, but there's other things, there's other factors. Is this hairstylist is she going to be a good fit, fit for my company and for how we run our team and how we run this salon? Because there's certain core values that are important to us, and if she doesn't possess those values, guess what? Number 1, she's not going to be happy, and guess what? She's probably not going to stay around that long. So, Recruiting advice for today, recruit based on values, recruit based on vision and recruit based on passion. And if the people that you're talking to are not clear yet on what they want to do, tell them, pause the cause, right? And figure that out first before they get in. Say, hey, look, I, I, let's have a conversation. I'll help you get clear, but do that and get clear first before you get started. So that way you can now get clear on what you want to do, get clear on your purpose, get clear on your passion, get clear on what's important to you and your values so that now you can make the right decision from the jump. Now you don't have to get involved in something and feel like you wasted your time when really you just didn't get clear first. So I hope that helped you. Just wanted to give that bit of advice from what I've been seeing and observing in the marketplace. It's one of the things that I'm going to be really helping people in this industry get really clear on is what their values are, what their vision is, professionally what they want to do, um, what their passions are and what their purpose is so that now they can choose business opportunities that are in alignment with that. So that way now they can be living their passion. They can experience what I get to experience every single day. And I want that for every single person in business. I want them to be able to love what they do, be self-motivated, to feel like, wow, I can't believe that I get paid to do the very things that I love to do. That's how I feel every single day. But the reason why I feel that way is because I made a business opportunity decision based on my purpose, based on my vision, based on my values, and based on my passions. When you recruit based on those factors, let me tell you something, you will recruit people who will stick and stay and who you will absolutely love to work with, and who would absolutely love to work with you and whatever company that you may be affiliated with. So if you got value out of this, share this video, share this video with other people, comment, let me know if this is an aha, this is a breakthrough for you, but also share it, share it with anybody. If you know anybody that's in the home-based business industry or if you know any business owner, because guess what? If you're in business, you should have a team. That's the whole point of having a business is to have a team that operates systems for you to now sell the product or service. If you have to keep trading your personal time, you don't have a business. You have a job. You, you created your own job. You're self-employed. So there's a difference between being self-employed and being a business owner. Self-employed people have to now show up to their business every single day to make money. But people who own a business, they have systems and they have a team that now sells the product or service for them so that now money can be made in the business without them, right? So I just wanted to give that. So if you know anyone who maybe is self-employed but wants to become a business owner, they want to be able to bring on a team, share this with them because let me tell you something, it's going to save them so much headache when it comes to bringing the right people on board and saving themselves from attrition and people quitting or just not even that people staying that really are not a good fit 
for the team or for the company. So just wanted to share that with you. Uh, feel free. I would appreciate it if you share it uh, with other people that you know could be blessed by it so that they can, you know, just eliminate some of the headache and the, the hassle and the struggle that I see so many people dealing with um, in business.